April 19, 1967, Surveyor 3 landed on the moon in a crater of Oceanus Procolorum, the ocean of storms. With Surveyor's electronic eye, we viewed the lunar surface. With its mechanical arm, we dug a small, shallow trench in the lunar soil. Now, on November 14, 1969, 31 months after Surveyor's landing, men were leaving the Earth to land on the ocean of storms. Charles Pete Conrad, Richard Gordon, Alan Bean, the crew of Apollo 12, the second manned landing on the face of the moon. Their target, the site of Surveyor 3. Seconds later, lightning struck the spacecraft. Yeah, I don't know what happened here. We had everything in the world drop out. I'm not sure we can get hit by lightning. Fuel cell lights and AC bus light, fuel cell disconnect, AC bus overload one and two, main bus A and B out. Okay, we're all organized again, Jack. We've had a couple of cardiac arrests down here too, Pete. In space and on Earth, they checked out the systems to be sure that the lightning had caused no damage that would endanger the mission. The time for commitment neared, the burn to send Apollo 12 to the moon. Translunar injection, TLI. Apollo 12, Houston, the good word is your go for TLI. Hoopy doo, we're ready. We didn't expect anything else. We didn't train for anything else, Pete. You better believe it. We have data and thrust is go. Burn looks good. With engine cut off, Apollo 12 was on its way to the moon. Now they turned around to dock with the lunar module and pull it free of the now useless booster. The next burn would place Apollo 12 on a new path to the moon. Previous missions had followed a trajectory that would allow them to loop around the moon and with no further burns return to Earth. But Apollo 12, in order to land at the proper site with the proper lighting, would break out of the free return path. Should a failure occur, a burn of the service or lunar module engine would be needed to get them home. settle down to the routine of the outward flight. We're trying all these things that we didn't have in Gemini, like toothpaste and shaving and uh, we're really having a ball up here. Roger. All dressed up and no place to go. Oh, we're going someplace. We can see it get bigger and bigger all the time. Then on November 17th, they prepared for orbit around the moon. Uh, going 
the darkness at this time. Roger, 12. As a matter of fact, we're there. Hello, 12, Houston, you're go for LOI. Roger, Houston, go for LOI. Burn checklist is complete to minus six minutes, and we're holding a dead point. LOI, lunar orbit insertion. The burn of the spacecraft rocket engine that would place Apollo 12 into orbit around the moon. With this burn occurring behind the moon, there would be no communications with the spacecraft until it came over the lunar horizon. The command module, Yankee Clipper. The lunar module, Intrepid. Apollo 12, Houston. Hello, Houston. Yankee Clipper with Intrepid in tow has arrived on time. I guess like everybody else that just arrived, we're all three of us are plastered to the windows looking. The next day, Pete Conrad and Alan Bean entered the lunar module, leaving Dick Gordon in the command module. Now the Intrepid and Yankee Clipper undocked and separated, preparatory to Intrepid's descent and landing on the moon. Okay, here you go again. As with the orbit insertion burn, the burn to begin descent was made behind the moon. Mission Control again contacted Intrepid as it came over the horizon. The Intrepid, Houston, how do you read? Hello, Houston, Intrepid. Roger, we read you loud and clear. We had a great DOI burn. And we just watched the first Earth rise, which was fantastic. The Surveyor 3 target was located in the middle of five craters, arranged like a snowman. The upper crater, called Head Crater. The body, called Surveyor Crater. Surveyor 3 is located in this crater. The object, to land as close as possible to Surveyor Crater. Then at 50,000 feet, Intrepid's engine fired and began the landing sequence. Okay, we're out of 19,000. I got some kind of a horizon out there. I got the freighters too, but I don't know where I am yet. Okay. And a Viper P-64. Okay. I'm trying to cheat and look out there. I think I see my crater. Hey, baby. I'm not sure. Coming through seven. Okay. P-64, P. P-64. Hey, there it is. There it is. Oh, my God. Right down the middle of the road. Outstanding. 42 degrees, P. Hey, it's starting it right from the center of the crater. Look out there. I can't believe it. Amazing. Fantastic. 42 degrees, babe. Just keep talking. Light it in. Coming down at about 99 feet a second. You're looking good. She's up okay. against them. Go for landing. Over one. Roger, okay, Roger. Roger. 40 degrees. LPD. That's so fantastic. I can't believe it. You're at 2,000 feet. Boys on the ground do okay. 1,800 feet up. 39 degrees. 38 degrees, 36 degrees, you're 1,200 feet, Pete. Okay, 1,000 feet coming down at 30. Looks good out there, babe, looks good. 32 degrees, you're at 800 feet. 33 degrees, 600 feet. Guys, hey, went look right. at that crater right where it's supposed to be. Hey, you're beautiful. 240 coming down at 5. Hey, you're really maneuvering around. Yeah. Come on down, Pete. Okay. 10% fuel. 200 feet, coming down at 3. You need to come on down, okay? 180 feet. 9%, you're looking good. Gonna get some dust before long. 96 feet, coming down at 6. Slow down the descent rate. 80 feet, 80 feet coming down at 4. You're looking good. 50 feet, coming down. Watch for the dust. 40 coming down at 2. Looking good. Watch the dust. Coming down at 2 feet. You got plenty of gas. Plenty of gas, dude. Hang in there. 30 seconds. 18 feet, coming down at 2. He's got it made. Come on in there. 24 feet. Contact light. Roger. Copy contact. Pro. Yeah, pro. Okay. Take the storm off. Okay. I'm cycling south. You got your command override off. Yep. The 
Good thing we leveled hey. off high yeah. and came down because I sure couldn't see what was underneath us once I uh, got into that dust. It's a nice place to land. Look at those boulders out there on the horizon, Pete. Gee, my name. As Conrad and Bean began preparations for their first trip of exploration, men on Earth began their attempts to fix their exact landing site. They were aided by Dick Gordon orbiting in Yankee Clipper. had been accomplished. For before men can engage in meaningful lunar exploration, they must be able to select a precise site and get there. But now it was time to exit the Intrepid and begin the exploration and experiments. Conrad climbed out first. Conrad collected a preliminary geological sample. I had the decided impression I don't want to move too rapidly, but I can walk quite well. Seems a little weird, I'll tell you. Don't think you're going to steam around here quite as fast as you thought you were. Hey, Al, you can work out here all day. Just take your time. Now Al Bean left Intrepid to join Conrad on the surface of the moon. Good shape. Okay, I'll pull the uh, hatch closed here. Okay. Don't lock it. Hey, and if I'd have landed 20 feet behind where I landed, we'd have landed right smack in that crater. Inadvertently, the television camera was pointed directly at the sun, causing the tube to burn out, the only unsuccessful aspect of the entire mission. Pete, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, we have the flag up. Like I said, I hope everybody down there is proud of it. If we are to put it up. That's affirmative, Pete. We're proud of what you're doing. They prepared an experiments package to be left on the moon, an automated scientific station called ALSEP that would send information to Earth for a year, powered by a nuclear electric generator. Okay. And we'll off the ALSEP again. Nope. We ought to be able to move out with this thing. They moved to the site selected to set up the station. They put together the experiment station. How far do you estimate we're from the lamp? 600 feet, 700 feet? 
ALSEP, an acronym for Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments Package. Piece by piece, they assemble the station. the solar wind experiment to measure atomic particles thrown off by the sun as they strike the moon. A device to measure the moon's tenuous atmosphere. A magnetometer to measure the lunar magnetic field, which would later be found to be 10 to 20 times stronger than many scientists had expected. A seismometer to measure physical properties of the crust and interior and the data station to collect the experimental measurements and transmit them to Earth. With ALSEP deployed, Conrad and Bean began collecting geological samples. They drove a core tube into the surface to collect soil from various depths. show you're uh, three hours and seven minutes into it, into the EVA, and we'd like you back uh, to the LEM to start the closeout in 10 minutes. That's at three plus one seven. At the hope to get back to that LEM, we're a long way. Yeah, Houston, we're approaching the LSAP, headed back to the LEM. Pete and Al, we're picking up uh, your heavy footprints going by the seismometer. Okay, I think we ought to dust each other off and get here. Man, we are filthy. Coming up the ladder. Gosh, you're shaking the whole mill. Sorry about that. Yankee Clipper, Houston. As Dick Gordon circled the moon, Pete Conrad and Al Bean rested for their next expedition. Their total time on the lunar surface had been just under four hours. Twelve and a half hours later, they went out again. Before they began their geological expedition to the surrounding craters and to surveyor, they worked around the lunar module, getting ready the tools and containers they would need. We're putting the uh, parts bag on uh, Pete right now, Houston. Roger, we copy that. And whatever happened since yesterday? I don't know, I think everybody learned the location. As Bean readied the equipment, Conrad went out to the ALSEP station to check an instrument about which the Earth-based scientists had shown some concern. I'll loop off to the ALSEP and check the side. I'll meet you at point one at head crater. Houston, Pete's on his way to the ALSEP. After Conrad checked the ALSEP experiments, they began the geological traverse, during which they would cover about a mile and take samples from six craters. You get a big surprise when you look into this head crater, Al. It's a heck of a lot deeper than it looked, eh? There you go. That's, that's a good rock. Hey, look at the pits in it, too. That's just going to be a good rock, Houston. Okay, Houston, I'm coming up on bench crater right now. What a fantastic sight. Al, look at the bottom of that crater. Hey, here, here's some good rock samples right here. Come on. Why don't we stop here and look at the chart a little bit more closely? Man, does that lamp look small back there? Pete, now we show you're 1,200 feet from the lamp. Okay. You know what I feel like, Al? Yeah. You ever see those pictures of giraffes running in slow motion? <laughs> That's exactly what I feel like. <laughs> Got the decided feeling. I'm going to sleep tonight. Then they arrived at Surveyor, their target. 
While the surveyor activities were a bonus, they were symbolic, symbolic of the success of Apollo 12. Yeah, we're uh, just going to move to the area. Now look, you can see which way it came in. See the way this gear pit dug in over there? Dug up dirt, and you're still sitting there. Okay, Houston, I, uh, I'm jiggling it. The surveyor is firmly planted here. That's no problem. Okay, Al, we're ready to start getting a TV camera. Okay. All right, you see that, that uh, material disintegrate? Hey, that's got the easy. Okay, two more tubes on that TV camera, and that baby's ours. Done. There you go. In the bag, in the bag. Yeah, I gotta zip it up. Good show. Be How about let me cut this scoop off? Sure. Didn't think you were gonna leave without a scoop, did you? Okay, let's head for Blackie Crater. So they left Surveyor, and after a stop at the crater called Block, they were back at the lunar module. Collecting the solar wind experiment, stowing the rock boxes. It's really ridiculous. I got dust all over the rock box and I'm trying to blow it off. Bean re-entered the lunar module first. Conrad, using a transfer apparatus similar to a clothesline reel, sent the samples up to him. Then, Conrad, too, left the lunar surface. Okay. Houston, uh, if you can mark me off the lunar surface. Roger, we got that beat at uh, three hours and 50 minutes into the EVA. Okay, yep, throw the ladder I come. I hope, I hope. <laughs> but there was no time to rest. The lunar module had to be prepared for liftoff from the moon and rendezvous with Yankee Clipper. Looking good, Pete. Three, two, one, lift off. And away we go. Did it fire? Join. We're on our way. And in one minute, go right 20 feet. So they rose to their rendezvous, and from Dick Gordon and Yankee Clipper. Please, sir, look at three down there, bump to all the sand dunes. All right. At a half a mile, uh, 19 feet a second. We're looking better all the time, Yankee. Okay, I'm down to three feet a second. Intrepid now, station keeping now with the Yankee Clipper. The two vehicles move together for docking. Now, Conrad and Bean rejoin Dick Gordon in the command module bringing with them the samples, experiments, and photographs to be returned to Earth. The next step, jettison the lunar module, then send it crashing into the moon to help calibrate the seismometer left on the surface. This instrument was designed to measure the intensity of meteor impacts, moon quakes, landslides, and similar phenomena. Guidance and control officer reports uh that uh, the two spacecraft have uh, separated. Apollo 12, Houston, the limb is on its way down. Roger, Roger. The men on Earth monitored the output of the seismometer, waiting for impact. Countdown for limb impact. Three, two, one, mark. Limb impact. As for the meaning of it, I'd rather not make a, an interpretation right now, but uh, it is as though one had struck a bell, say, in the, in the bell, belfry of the church, a single blow, and found that the reverberation from it continued for 30 minutes. After 55 minutes, the reverberation still had not faded completely. Apollo 12 continued its orbits of the moon, gathering photography for scientific study, including the Fra Mauro area, the landing site for Apollo 13. 
And then it was time to head back to Earth. Roger, roger. Bye-bye. See you on the other side. Have fun. The burn to send them home would take place behind the moon. On Earth, we waited. Waited for Apollo 12 once more. Apollo 12, Houston. Hello, Houston. Apollo 12, route home. Shortly before re-entry, the crew of Apollo 12 watched the Earth move to blot out the sun. We're getting a spectacular view at Eclipse. We're using the uh, sun filter from the GNN optics looking through it. It's unbelievable. Then Apollo 12 hit the atmosphere of Earth at 25,000 miles an hour. Okay, it's right on the point. Rise, we concur, Pete. The log of Apollo 12 does not end with splashdown. It only begins. And if I got the grapefruit rock, I'm all grapefruit rock. Hey, I, I'm looking at a rock that has all crystals in it. And on the moon, an experimental station called ALSEP sends back its data each experiment representing a milestone in our knowledge of the moon. The lunar ionosphere alias side uh, has been turned on and uh, I'm very happy to say is functioning perfectly. The solar wind spectrometer has been functioning, of course, since the ALSA has been turned on. The seismic experiment, is, as has been reported, is functioning in all respects properly. I think it will represent a major discovery of completely unanticipated about the moon. We're going to have to, to throw the book away and uh, begin over again, which seems to be the case for the moon in general. Apollo 12 was a milestone in manned extraterrestrial exploration. It achieved its pinpoint landing as close as possible to its selected target marked by surveyor. It set a pace and a pattern of scientific exploration that future missions will not only follow but we'll go beyond.